Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Monica, welcome. Carolyn, hello. God bless you. I am. Uh, good evening, Monica. I count it a joy. I count it an honor, a privilege, pleasure to be before you this evening with the word of God. Truly, it didn't come forth without that opposition, but the purposes and plan of God always prevail. And so I had to go through a lot to get here today, but you know, thank God I'm here. I am whole. I am ready. I'm equipped. I'm anointed. I'm appointed to bring forth the word of God today. And I stand on the word of God and I decree what God has already declared that no weapon formed against me is going to prosper and no weapon formed against you is going to prosper. So good evening, Miss Alma. Thank God for each and every one of you who have joined me today. I've had quite, quite a day, busy day, a lot going on today, but um, I am here by the grace and I'm here by divine appointment from the Lord. And so good evening once again. Good evening, El. Welcome. I'm truly excited about the word that God has given me today. And um, it's going to be powerful, as always. It's a great word. God is truly taking us back to the basics. He's taking us back to the beginning. And so I'm happy. Good evening, Cody. Cousin, how are you doing? God bless you. So the word that God has given us today is going to really fill your spirit. It's going to bring forth so much insight and revelation to you today. It's going to increase your understanding as it pertains to the will of God. And so again, I stand here with my testimony that it's by the grace of God that I am here today that I was able to make my way through all the challenges that I face today to get here to you, to bring you this word from the Lord. So God bless each and every one of you. God bless you. Tamika, God bless you. Honey, I see that you have, you have tuned in. And so we are going to get started. We are going to begin with prayer and we are going to end with prayer. So let us begin and let us get started in prayer. Father, we just thank you today, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you today, God, for your word. We thank you for your will. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for your son, Jesus, God, who, who died on the cross so that we may live, God. We thank you for the sacrificing, O oh God of Jesus, O oh God, your only begotten son that you sacrificed for us so that we may live and that we may have the right to the tree of life and that we may have life abundantly. We may have life for all eternity, oh God. And so, Father, we thank you right now, Lord God, for your goodness. We thank you for your faithfulness, God. We thank you for your great compassion towards us, oh God. Father, we thank you today for bringing us together, oh God, in this place, oh God, in your presence, oh God, in this atmosphere right now, oh God, for the sole purposes of honoring and magnifying and glorifying your name, God. Father, you are worthy of the honor. You are worthy of the glory, God. You are worthy of the praise. And Father, I thank you, God, that you have already gone before me, that you have already gone before us, O oh God, to make every cricket play straight and to make our path plain. Father God, in your name, O oh God, under your authority and your anointing, O oh God, I cast down every stronghold. I cast down every thought, every imagination, every distraction, every interruption, O oh God, everything that will serve as a hindrance, O oh God, to your word coming forth today, O oh God. I cast it down in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I thank you that the air is clear. I thank you that our hearts and minds are clear, O oh God, that our eyes and ears are, and hearts are open and ready to receive with meekness your engrafted word that is able to save our souls, O oh God, and make us wise unto salvation. Father, I thank you today that the word that come forth from you, O oh God, that it will not return void, but it will accomplish everything that you send it forth to do. Father, I thank you, O oh God, for choosing me and using me in this hour as your vessel of honor, Father God. I thank you right now, God, for the oracles of God that you are going to speak through my lips of clay, O oh God. And Father, I thank you that in all that I do here today in word and tongue and in deed, God, that you will be glorified and you will be magnified in the heavens and in the earth and in our lives and in this place, O oh God. Father, we thank you right now, Lord Jesus, that the prayers of the righteous you hear we thank you, O oh God, that you, O oh God, are in the midst of us on today and that your Holy Spirit dwells on the inside of us. Father, use me 
for your glory and your good pleasure. Father, I decrease that you may increase. Let it be none of me, but all of you, O oh God, in your son Jesus' name, I pray and we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. We are going to be coming today from 2 Kings chapter 5. 2 Kings chapter 5. That is in the Old Testament. Chapter 5 of 2 Kings. And it reads, Now Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Syria, was a great and honorable man in the eyes of his master, because by him the Lord had given him great victories to Syria. He was also a mighty man of valor, a mighty man of valor, but a leper. And the Syrians had gone out on raids and had brought back captive a young girl from the land of Israel. She waited on Naaman's wife. Then she said to her mistress, if only my master were with the prophet who is in Samaria. For he wouldn't heal him of his leprosy. And Naaman went in and told his master, saying, Thus says the girl who is from the land of Israel. Then the king of Syria said, Go now. So she departed and took with him ten talents of silver, six thousand shekels of gold, and ten changes of clothing. Then he brought the letter to the king of Israel, which said, Now be advised, when this letter comes to you, that I have sent Naaman, my servant to you, that you may heal him of his leprosy. And it happened when the king of Israel read the letter that he tore his clothes and said, Am I God to kill and make alive? That this man sends a man to me to heal him of his leprosy? Therefore, please consider and see how he seeks a quarrel with me. So it was when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes that he sent to the king saying, why have you torn your clothes? Please let him come to me and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. Then Naaman went with his horses and chariot and he stood at the door of Elisha's house and Elisha sent a messenger to Naaman. He didn't even go to the door to greet Naaman, but he sent a messenger saying, go and wash in the Jordan seven times and your flesh shall be restored. And you shall be clean. But Naaman became furious because that's not what he wanted to hear. He went away and said, indeed, I said to myself, he will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord, his God, and wave his hand over the place and heal the leprosy. Are not the Abana and the Parfar, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? <laughs> so he turned and went away in rage and his servants came near and spoke to him and said, my father, if the prophet had told you to do something great, my God, would you not have done it? How much more than when he says to you, wash and be clean. Now, Naaman had leprosy and he wanted to be clean, but instead of him going and, and dipping in the Jordan River. He is complaining because he felt like there were more beautiful and cleaner and greater rivers than the Jordan. He felt like he deserved a better way of being healed. And so he went down and dipped seven times, nevertheless, in the Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh was restored like the flesh of a little child. And he was clean. My message today is, don't miss God. Don't miss out on what God is doing or desires to do or is working to do in your life in this season because you feel like God is not handling the situation. God is not fixing the problem. God is not bringing about your healing and your deliverance in the way that you think God ought to do. See, many of us have missed God. The miracle has been right before us. The blessing has been right before us. The opportunity has been right before us. But because we didn't like the way the, the package that the gift was wrapped in, we did not receive it. And because of that, we miss God. See, sometimes the gift that God gives you may not come in the package or the wrapping that you think it ought to come into. 
But you got to be able to trust in God and you got to be able to receive what the Lord presents to you, even if you don't understand it, even if you don't like the way it looks or if you don't like the way that it sounds. So because this situation wasn't going according to the way that Naaman had purpose in his heart and his mind, he did not want to receive it. Now, Naaman almost missed his blessing. And we're going to talk about that. Why? Because he did not want to receive what God had made available to him in the manner that God had made it available to him in the way that God has made it available to Naaman. Many of us have missed God in his very same manner. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to miss out on nothing God is doing in my life at any time, for any reason, and during any season of my life. I do not want to miss God. There have been times when I have missed God because I had my mind fixed on the way I wanted the thing to go. And it didn't go that way. It didn't look that way. It didn't sound that way. And so I'm going to assume that it's not God. And many of us have had the same type of situation. But here today, I'm here to teach you and to tell you that you don't want to miss God. And God doesn't want you to miss him. And so we're going to talk about ways that we can make sure that we don't miss out on the purposes and plans of God. That we don't miss out on the miracles and the blessings of God. That we don't miss out on divine opportunities and doors being opening in our lives because we have the wrong misconception and because we are stubborn and because we want things to go the way that we think they ought to go. Today, God has given us a mighty word on how we can make sure that we stay in tune with the activity, with the movement, with the miracles, with the blessings, with the promises, the provisions, the opportunities that God brings our way. We're going to talk about that today. So here's Naaman. Naaman was a powerful man, a very prominent and powerful man. The Bible says that Naaman had been granted great victories by God. Now, Naaman was a general of the army, the Arabian army of Syria. So he was not even a commander in Israel, but God had given him great victories over Israel because of their disobedience. But Naaman, the Bible talks about his character. The Bible talks about his ability. The Bible talks about his honor because Naaman was a great and powerful biblical figure in the Bible. He was a very powerful man. He was a brave warrior. He was a general. He was a commander. He was a soldier. He was a military leader. And the Bible says that God granted great victories to Naaman. He was a great and powerful man, highly honored, highly esteemed, highly regarded. He was deemed great in the sight of the king of Syria. He was victorious. And he was valid. He was wealthy. Naaman had power. He had prestige. He had position. But he also had a problem. And that problem was leprosy. A very dreadful skin disease that was not curable in most cases. And so he had leprosy. And leprosy was highly contagious. And when you were a person who had leprosy, people did not want to be around you. People did not want to be in your presence because it was a highly contagious skin disease. And there were many types of leprosy during that time. And so he had a problem. He had leprosy. But what I love about God is God was already preparing Naaman for his healing through this servant girl who said, I wish my master knew about this prophet in Israel for sure. If he goes to see this prophet, he will get healed. So God had already started preparing the way for Naaman to be healed. And see what I love about God, God is always working. He doesn't wait for you to have a problem. He doesn't wait for the problem to occur in the situation. God is always working on our behalf. He is always working all things together for the good of those who love the Lord and those who are called according to his purpose. And so God was already making a way for Naaman to receive his healing. He was preparing the way. And he used that servant girl, that servant girl to bring Israel's um, greatest military foe, a, a great biblical truth, and another great victory. But this victory was like none other. This was the greatest victory. Yes, he had many military victories, but there's no victory greater than the victory that we have in Jesus Christ. That that's the greatest victory that God is going to grant through Naaman. And so my message here today is don't miss God. 
we read here about the approach and the attitude and the way that Naaman went through to receive his healing from God. And when I read the story about how Naaman was angry and disappointed and, and enraged over the process, it reminds me of times where I've had to go through processes to get my promise, when I've had to go through the process to get my blessing. See, God, everything is a process. Everything. And a lot of times we focus on the process and not the promise. See, God wants us to focus on the promise. Okay, the promise was for Naaman to receive his healing. But instead of focusing on the promise, Naaman decided that he was going to focus on the process. He had his own perspective of how he thought things should go. After all, I'm Naaman, right? I'm a commander of the Aramean army. I am a general of the Aramean army. I'm this highly powerful, highly regarded, highly esteemed general and commander in the army. And God has granted me many great victories. So this shouldn't be a problem. Let me tell you something. The way God brought victory to you in this situation may not bring be the way that God brings victory to you in the next situation. God is not God does not always operate the same. His character doesn't change. His nature doesn't change. His word doesn't change. But his strategies can change. And so we must not put God in a box. We must not try to figure God out. The Bible says there is no searching of his understanding. If you are trying to figure God out, I'm here to stop you today. You're never going to accomplish your mission. And so Naaman had a whole perspective of how he thought his healing should be brought about to him. But it took a whole different turn than when Naaman had purpose in his heart and mind. And so I have a couple of strategies here that I'm going to give you today that will help you, that will teach you and guide you so that you will not miss God. When I say miss God, the blessings, the opportunities, the, um, the, the miracles, the provisions, the gifts, the promises, I don't know about you, but I can afford to miss God. I do not want to miss God. And so the first way I have here of how you can make sure that you don't miss God is to have faith and trust in God and God alone. Trust his plan and purpose for your life. Have faith and trust in God, knowing that he can do just what he says he can do. And I don't know about you. I don't care how he does it. I don't care when he does it. As long as he does it. God says, I'm not a man that I shall lie. Neither the son of man that I shall repent. If I said it, I'll do it. If I spoke it, it shall come to pass. He didn't say when it shall come to pass. He didn't say if it shall come to pass. But he did say it shall come to pass according to the purpose, the plans, and the will of God concerning your life. So I'm here to encourage you today, if you don't want to miss God, to trust in God, to have faith in God and God alone, to believe him for what he says, to believe that God can do just what he says he can do. Trust his plan and purpose for your life. Naaman's first response was rage and disbelief. He did not believe that God could heal him by dipping in the dirty, nasty, filthy Jordan River when there were so many other beautiful rivers that he could have easily have dipped in. They were clean. They were blue. You can see your feet at the bottom of the water. But why, God, do you want me to go dip in the Jordan River? Many of us right now asking God, God, why do you want me to go to this place? There are greater churches. God, there are greater banks. God, God, there are greater places for me to go minister. God, why? There are greater jobs out there, greater hospitals, God, greater professions. Why do you want me to do this thing? Why do I have to go to the lowest part of the totem pole to accomplish this task? My God, hear what I'm saying to you. Many of us have missed God because we feel like we're too high and mighty, that we have arrived to a place in our walk with God and our journey, that we are above certain things and we are above certain people. And that, my friends, is called pride. You never know what God will have you to do. But you got to trust God. You got to have faith in God. And you got to trust God in the purpose and plan that he has for your life. And so the prophet Elisha didn't even go out and meet Naaman when he came. Now, the Bible doesn't say why. Maybe he knew that leprosy was contagious. 
and he didn't want to go out and meet him. Maybe it's because Naaman felt like, because I'm here, I'm the commander, I'm the general, this prophet ought to come out and bow down and worship me and serve me and heal me. For whatever reason, though, the prophet Elisha did not go out to meet Naaman. Instead, he said, I need you to go and dip in the Jordan River seven times. We seek God for directions. We seek God for wisdom and instructions. And when God tells us what to do in our situations, we don't want to do it if it doesn't line up with what we had in mind. There's some things God said, just don't eat this anymore and your body will be healed. But yet, no, I got to have, I got to have my, my spicy chips. I got to have my pig feet. I got to have all these things. And God is saying, well, if you want your body, if you don't want to have hypertension, if you don't want to have diabetes, then you need to stop eating these things and your healing will be certain. Why is it that when God tells us, how to do it, what to do, when to do. But if he doesn't tell us why, we get upset. Naaman didn't understand why he had to dip in the dirty Jordan River. And sometimes God will cause us to do things that we think we are so far beyond. We're trying to figure out, God, why do you have me doing it? This doesn't make sense. I, I did this five years ago. But there's a reason for everything that God has you to do. There are no accidents and there are no coincidences in God. Everything he does is for a purpose. It's on purpose and it's by purpose. And so we must trust. We must trust the purpose and plan of God that he has for our lives. So Elisha wanted Naaman to, come, to totally trust in God. I believe that's why he didn't go out there because he thought the prophet was going to be the one because the little girl said, hey, there's a prophet. If you go see this prophet, he will surely get his healing. But Elisha didn't want him to think that he was the one that can bring healing to his body. It is God alone who brings healing to the body and the soul and the spirit and the emotions and the mind of human beings. Healing of every source, healing on every level, healing of every kind comes from God and God alone. If you need to be healed right now, you need to look to God for your healing. You don't need alcohol. You don't need cigarettes. You don't need um, all types of um, palm readers. You need God. Only God can heal us. Healing comes from God and God alone. And I believe that's what the prophet wanted Naaman to realize. And so he instructed him, go, go wash. Go wash in the Jordan River. Go dip in that Jordan River seven times. We must trust that God planned for us. It's just what he says. He says in Jeremiah 29 and 11, I know the plan that I have for you. You may not know it all, but God knows specifically what plan and purpose he has for your life. And you can be confident it's a good plan and it's a good purpose. He says to do you good and no evil, to prosper you and to do you no harm, to give you hope and a future. That is powerful. That's the type of plan that God has for your life. And so you must trust the plan and purposes of God concerning your life. That's how you don't miss God. It says also in Proverbs 3, verse 5 through 6, says, trust in the Lord and lean not into your own understanding. Again, trust in God. That's how you go about not missing God. Trust in the Lord and lean not into your own understanding. When it doesn't make sense to your senses, when it doesn't feel comfortable to you, when it doesn't feel or look right or sound right, you must still trust in the Lord concerning his plan and purpose for your life. Trust in the Lord and lean not into your own understanding. And in all your ways, acknowledge the Lord and he will direct your path. That's how you avoid missing God. Trust me, you don't want to miss God. There are consequences to missing God. And so we must have faith in God and trust in God and God alone. It says in Proverbs 19 to 21, many plans are in a man's mind, but it is the Lord's purpose for him that will stand and be carried out. The purpose and plans of God are going to always prevail. It's going to always win. So you might as well get on board. You might as well get on board with God because God is not going to get on board with you. He has a plan 
for your life. And that plan is good to do you good and no evil, to prosper you, to give you hope and a future. That is a powerful plan. That is a perfect plan. That is a pure and prosperous plan. Trust in God and God alone and trust in the plan and purpose that he has for your life. That is the first way that you can go about not missing God. Trust me, you don't want to miss God. You don't want to miss God. I love what it says in Isaiah 55 and 18. It says 55 and 8. It says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways, my ways, declares the Lord. Stop trying to figure God out and just trust him. Stop trying to make sense out of everything that God tells you to do and just trust him. Stop trying to rationalize in your mind and your emotions and trust him. And God, have faith in him and believe in God and know that the plan and purpose that he has for your life is a good plan. That plan is to prosper you, to do you good and no evil, to give you hope and a future. That's how you go about not missing God. He says, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours. Naaman didn't realize that God's ways are higher than his ways. God's ways are also higher than your ways. God's ways are higher than my ways. His thoughts are higher than your thoughts. Listen, stop making yourself equal with God in your thinking. He doesn't think like you. We truly have attributes of God, but your level of thinking will never measure up to God's level of thinking. Your thoughts are not his thoughts and your ways are not his ways. And many of us have missed God because we're trying to figure God out. We're trying to rationalize and reason in our own mind and cause it to make sense to us and think because it makes sense to us that it is God. No, that is not the case. He says, my thoughts are not your thoughts and my ways are not your ways. So the best thing for you to do is to acknowledge God in all your ways. And he said, I will direct your path. It says, um, for as the rain and snow come down from heaven, and do not return there without watering the earth, making it bear and sprout, and providing seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So will my word, which goes forth out of my mouth, it will not return to me, boy, useless, and without result, without accomplish, accomplishing what I desire, and without succeeding in the matter for which I have sent it. God's word is not going to return void. He says for Naaman to go and dip in the Jordan River and he will be healed. God's word will never return back to him void. It will always accomplish that which he sends and purposes to do. It will always produce results. And so if you don't want to miss God, the first thing to do is to trust and have faith in God and God alone. Trust the plan and purpose that God has for your life. He has a specific plan for you and for you and you and you and each and every one of you who are watching right now. God has a special and specific plan for your life. Acknowledge God through prayer. Acknowledge God through quality time in his presence. Acknowledge God by asking him for guidance and wisdom and instructions and knowledge and insight. That's how you stay on course with God and don't miss him. Don't miss a beat with God. Thank you, Father. So that's step number one. Step number two is by studying the word of God. This is a sure way. This is a sure way to not miss God. The Bible says if we pray according to his will, he hears us every time. You will never miss God if you pray according to his will. What is his will? His will is his word and his word is his will. So if you don't know the word, you won't know the will. And if you know the will, that means you have to know the word. So the will and word are one and the same. The will of God is the word of God. And the word of God is the will of God. The reason many of us don't know the will of God is because we don't know the word. And because we don't know the word, we don't know the will. And so God's word has implanted inside of it, written inside his will concerning our everyday life and everyday living, righteous living, holy living. God has it in his word. Um, ways concerning how we should conduct ourselves, our character, our attitude, our actions, our way of thinking. All of this is found in the word of God. But if we don't know the word, we won't know what the will is. And many people saying, I don't know what the will of God is in my life. Do you read the word? Because the word is in the will. And the more you read the word of God, the more the will of God is going to unfold right before your face. The will of God concerning your life specifically. Thank you, Lord. 
It says in Ephesians 5 and 17, therefore, do not be foolish and thoughtless, but understand and firmly grasp what the will of the Lord is. Don't be foolish. That means that if you don't know the will of God, that's foolishness on your behalf. That's a foolish thing on your behalf. Listen, the will of God is not a mystery. He wants you to know it. He's not trying to hide it. He's not trying to cover it up. He's not trying to keep it a secret. God wants you to know what his will is. It is already there written for you. All you have to do is read the word of God, seek the Lord in prayer and ask him, God, what is your will concerning my life? But you can't just pray about it. You have to study the word because his will is his word and his word is his will. Jesus was always about the Father's will. He says in John 6, I love this, one of my favorite scriptures, 6 and 38. For I have come down from heaven. This is Jesus. Not to do my own will, but to do the will of him who sent me. This is the will of him who sent me that all that of all that he has given me, I lose nothing. But that I give new life and raise it up at the last day. For this is my father's will and purpose that everyone who sees the son and believes in him as savior will have eternal life. And I will raise him up from the dead on the last day. Jesus says, I'm always about my father's will. Are you about the father's will or your own will? Because if you're about your own will, you're going to miss God every single time. And if you have been missing God over and over and over again, it is because you're not about the father's will. You are about your own will. And it's time that you surrender to the will of God, that you learn what the will of God is concerning your life. How do you do that? By studying the word. How do you do that? Through prayer. How do you do that? By asking God and seeking him for his will concerning your life. Romans 12 and 2 says, be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. See, name and mind had to be renewed that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So your mind has to be renewed. See, we have our own way of thinking. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. We are human beings. We are flesh and bones, okay? We are mortals. And so we think with a fleshly human nature. And so our minds have to be renewed. And your mind is not going to be renewed unless it's renewed by the word of God. And once your mind begins to get, become renewed, your perspective is going to change. Your attitude, which your attitude is a way of thinking. It's not smacking your teeth. Attitude is a way of thinking. And so when your mind is renewed, your attitude is going to be transformed. You're going to be transformed. And you're going to start thinking like God will have you to think. And now your thoughts are going to be what God thoughts are going to become your thought. His desire is become your desire. His will has become your will. So in order for us to not miss God, our minds have to be renewed. It cannot be based off worldly systems and the way it works in the world. The people of God, let me tell you, worldly wisdom never measure up to godly wisdom. In fact, worldly wisdom is not wisdom at all. It's just a terminology. The only wisdom is the pure wisdom that comes from above, from God. God himself gives man wisdom. And so godly wisdom is the only wisdom. And so we cannot base our lies on worldly systems and worldly standards because the world says you should be married at 35 years old with about five children. That may not be the will of God for you. Many people have jumped up and ran off and got married because they were at a certain age and a certain time frame in their lives and society and the people and the church and the neighbors and the family members have told them you ought to be married by now. You're 35. And I did have jumped up and married Joe Blow and he was not who God had and purpose in, in his mind and plan and purpose and heart for them to Mary, God's ways are not your ways. His thoughts are not your thoughts. Be sure that you don't miss God. Another way you can do this is by studying the word of God. And listen, if what you're trying to do, if what you're thinking, if what you're saying does not line up with the word of God and the will of God, then it's not God. It must be in alignment and agreement with the word of God. And if it's not, then it is not the will and word of God. It is not the purpose and plan of God concerning your life. So if you don't want to miss God, don't base your life on worldly systems. Don't base your, your life on stereotypes. Don't base your life off the norm. Just because it's the norm doesn't mean it should be acceptable by you. The only standards that we are to live by as believers of God is the word of God. That's the standard by which we are to live is by the word of God. That is our standard for living. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 
And so also it says the counsel of the Lord. Look at that. The counsel, the word of the Lord stands forever. The thoughts and plans of his heart through all generation. The counsel of the Lord stands forever. The thoughts and plans of his heart through all generation. If you don't want to miss God, make sure you study his word because in his word is everything that pertains to your life. In his word is everything that you need. In his word is his will for your life, his purpose and his plan for your life. There's not a single human being on this earth who can tell you what the will of God is and the purpose and plans of God concerning your life but God alone. Stop asking people what they think your calling is. Stop asking people what they think you ought to be doing. Turn to the Father, the Master of all. Turn to God, the one who has created the blueprint from your for your life since the foundation of the world. The plan has already been laid. All you have to do is follow the plan of God for your life and you will be prosperous you will be victorious you will be successful you will be blessed your life will be filled with joy and gladness the purposes and plan of God will always prevail nothing can stand against it and win glory be to God hallelujah thank you father Woo, glory thank you God the purposes and plan of God so that's the second way the first way we said to trust in God and have faith in him to trust his plan and purpose for your life. That's how you don't miss God. The second way we said to do this is to study the word of God. Because the word of God is the will of God. And the will of God is the word of God. The third way is to humble yourself. You do not know it all. The only omnipotent, omniscient, and I'm not present person and being is God himself. He knew the end from the beginning. God knows everything. Nothing is greater than his knowledge. He knows you. He created your frame. He knew you before you were conceived in your mother's womb. God knows everything about you and you and me. There's nothing about you that surprises my God, your God, our God. So humble yourself before God. The wonderful thing about naming is once he thought about it, once he thought about this thing, he would, he was willing to do whatever it was that God told him to do to get his healing. Woo, my God, that's humility. I want you to think about it. You need to be healed right now. You're giving God all the strategies and ways and ideas you think he ought to bring about your healing. Why not say, God, whichever way you want to heal me, it's all right with me. God, whichever way you want to deliver me, God, it's all right with me. God, whichever way you want to bring about the money to pay my mortgage this month, God, it's all right with me. God, whichever way you choose to bless me in this situation, God, it's all right with me. Why? Because I trust your wisdom. I trust your knowledge. I trust the plan and purposes that you have for my life. God, I'm not going to miss you because I'm too proudful and I'm too stubborn, oh God, to humble myself before you, God. So, God, I come before you right now in the spirit of, of humility and gratitude, oh God, willing and ready and able to receive my healing, my deliverance, my provisions, my miracle in whatever way you want to deliver it to me. That is humility. Hallelujah. God's will concerning our lives is that we be humble. That's the will of God. It says in James 4 and 10, humble yourself. Oh, my God. Feeling very insignificant. Because see, sometimes we think that we are the holiest one of Israel. The holy one of Israel. Sometimes the Bible says, don't think too highly of yourself. Sometimes we think because we have a certain title. Sometimes we think because we've been saved for 25 years that God ought to deal with us a certain kind of way. Let me tell you something. God doesn't care about titles. And he definitely doesn't care about saying yardy. You have some people been saved 25 years and got some newcomers, some babies in Christ. They have more fire and flame than a person who's been saved for 25 years. So God is not looking for seniority. He's looking for obedience. He's looking for faithfulness. These are the things that please God. These are the type of people that God can use. The faithful, the humble, the obedient people. That's what God is looking for. Willing vessels to use. Don't let your seniority fool you. Don't let your title fool you. Don't let your bank account fool you. These things are insignificant in the sight of God. 
He says, humble yourself in the presence of God, under the mighty hand of God. And in due season, God, I'm going to exalt you. I'm going to raise you up. I'm going to lift you up. I'm going to elevate you to the next level. But it won't come without humility. Humility precedes, it comes before exaltation. You must first humble yourself before God can exalt you. The Bible says God resists the proud. He gives grace, he gives grace to the humble. He resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. So if you're a prideful person, God is resisting you. He is, a, he's, he is opposing you. Therefore, you are missing God every single day on every single level. The Bible says that pride brings a man low. Pride will bring you as low as you can go. Pride will bring you as low as you can go. So humble yourself. That's how you don't miss God. I love Proverbs 14 and 12. It says, there is a way that seems right to a man and appears straight before him. But at the end of that way is death. Listen to me, every single body who's watching and those of you who will come later. Just because it seems right doesn't make it right. Just because it sounds right doesn't make it right. Just because it feels right doesn't make it right. Oh, the timing just seems perfect. The timing just feels perfect. It just looks perfect. It seems perfect. It sounds perfect. But is it in alignment with the perfect will and plan and purposes of God concerning your life? If it does not align with the will and word of God, the purposes and plans of God concerning your life, it is not God. And there's nothing perfect. And there's nothing good about it. Please remember this. Don't get caught up in your emotions. Don't go by what seems right. What you think is right, what looks like is right, what feels right, what appears to be right, because looks can be deceiving. And the Bible says even the devil, he transformed himself into an angel of light. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and know that everything that seems right, feels right, looks right, and appears right is not right. If it's not in alignment with the will and word of God, it's not right. It's not right in the sight of God and it's not right for you. It says in Psalms 37 and 5, commit your way to the Lord. That's how you humble yourself. Trust to him and he will do it. If you sing and want to get married, Lord, I want to get married. I'm going to commit my single life to you, God. And I'm going to let you prosper me in this way. I'm going to let you bless me in this way. God, I want to do this thing at this time, but I'm not sure if this is in alignment with your purpose and plan in this season of my life. So God, I commit this desire. I commit this decision. I commit this opportunity. Maybe it's not time for you to go back to school. So God, I commit this thing to you, Father. You tell me what to do. You guide me. Let me know if this is the right season. Let me know if this is the right time. People, that is humility. When you realize that God's wisdom is greater than yours, when you realize that his thoughts are not your thoughts, his ways are not your ways, his timing is not your timing. When you get to that place in your life, you, my friend, you, my sister, my brother, have now humbled yourself in the sight and in the presence and in the hand of God. It says a man pride, a man's pride and sense of self-importance will bring him down. But he who has a humble spirit will obtain honor. Look at that. God honors. He honors the humble. When you can say to God, let not my will, but your will be done. You have entered a whole new dimension of humility. Oh, my God. Glory. When you can say, God, I don't care how much pressure is on you. I don't care how painful it is, how frustrating, how much it doesn't make sense. And you're saying, God, this thing is challenging me, God. Hallelujah. I'm being tested. I'm being tried. I'm being challenged. I'm struggling, God. But whatever your will is for me in this situation, my God, in this issue, Father, let your will be done. That's humility. That's humility humility and that's how you don't miss God that's how you don't and later on you're gonna be saying Lord I'm glad I waited Woo, God I was desperate God I was getting anxious I become apprehensive but I'm glad God that I waited I'm glad I didn't make the purchase I'm glad I didn't make the deal I'm glad I didn't walk down the aisle God I thank you Lord Jesus that I committed this thing to you I thank you Lord God that I acknowledge you God in my ways I thank you God that I humbled myself before you in prayer and I began to seek you for guidance seek you for wisdom 
seek you for directions, seek you for instructions. And God, you answered me. God, the way I came out this thing wasn't how I had anticipated. But God, I thank you that even in the midst of it, you never left me. You never forsook me, God. So Father, I thank you, Lord Jesus, that your will was done. When Jesus was in the garden of Gethsemane, three times he said, Father, not as I will, but your will be done. The Bible says he was pressed in the garden. He was stressed in the garden. My God, he was perplexed in that garden. He knew what he was about to go through. He said, Father, but not as I will. Woo, my God, but your will, God, let it be done. That's humility, and that's the level I, I strive for every day, Father, even when it doesn't feel comfortable, even when I feel challenged, even when I feel strong, like I'm struggling, God. I know this is a tough situation. Many times I want to come out. God, bring me out, but God, I don't want to bring you out. I want to bring you through, and so I had to humble myself, and I had to do a hardship as a good soldier, my God, and say, God, I know that all things, woo, my robo shade, all things are working together for my good, for I'm called according to your purpose, my God. Let your will be done. Sometimes the will is not going to be comfortable. It's not going to be easy, but you got to commit to it. You got to surrender to it. You got to submit to it. You got to yield to it. You have to humble yourself and say, not as I will, but your will be done. That's the third way. Humility, humble yourself. And finally, whew, thank you, Jesus. Obedience. That's how you don't miss God. Listen, had Naaman not obeyed God, he would still be a leper. <laughs> he would have died a leper. Some of us right now are going to die bitter because we won't obey God. Some of us are going to die with unforgiveness in our hearts because we don't want to say I'm sorry and obey God. You don't want to listen to me. You do not want to miss God. You cannot afford to miss God. Your whole life hinges on the will and the word of God. The purpose and plans that God has for your life. We cannot afford to miss God. Don't allow your flesh to interfere with you obeying God. Don't let your way of thinking interfere with you being blessed of the Lord and receiving everything that God has in store for you. We cannot afford to miss God. Oh my God. And after this lesson, after this message, I pray and I decree that we were no longer Miss the mark with God. Hallelujah. We will no longer miss the movement of God, the miracles of God, the activity of God in our lives in every given season. Obedience. Obedience. To obey is better than to sacrifice. Naaman was a foreigner, but he came to faith in God through obedience. Because after he was healed, his whole life changed. God didn't just heal his body. God healed his soul. And Naaman began to have faith in God. Oh, my boy, Shay. Thank you, Lord. Because of obedience. He paid. The Bible says Jesus learned. Jesus, um, through the things he suffered, he came to, through, to obedience through the things he suffered. Sometimes the things we suffer and go through, it brings us to that level of obedience that God is calling us to. Because we should continue to increase in faith and Continue to increase in our level of obedience to God and in God. A foreigner, Naaman, a commander, a man of prestige and power. Look at this. And prosperity had a problem. And that problem led Naaman to God. There's some problems that God allowed to exist in your life so that they can bring you to him so that you will receive the gift of salvation. So he can take you from glory to glory, from strength to strength, from faith to faith. So that you will come to a higher level of obedience. So you will come to a higher level of faithfulness. My God, God does not want you to stay the same. Yes, I know. And I believe and I agree when people say God says come as you are. But listen, he didn't say stay as you are. Your faith should not be where it was five years ago. Not even five days ago. And sometimes God has to allow us to go through things to build our most holy faith. Abraham was the father of faith, but he grew to that title. He went through some things to get to that point of faith in God. The same applies to us. So obey the command of the Lord. 
Do what God tells you to do. When he tells you to do it. How he tells you to do it. I don't care what people say. I don't care what people think. They are not God. If you are a servant of God, then you should seek to please God and not man. Bond servants of God seek to please Christ, not people. Are you a people pleaser or a God pleaser? It all depends on who you're seeking to serve. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Obey the command of God at all costs. Do what God tells you to do, when he tells you to do it, how he tells you to do it. It says in John 14 and 23, I'm about to close. Jesus answered, if anyone really loves me, he will keep my word. He will keep my commandments. He will keep my teaching. You can't say you love God and you're not obeying God. Those two don't work together. He said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. You will obey my teachings. You will do what I tell you to do. You won't just be a hearer of the word. You will be a doer of the word. Any of us can hear anything. But it's in the application. Obedience is in the application. Obedience requires application and action. Application and action. If those two are not taking place, you're just hearing. He says, don't be just a hearer of the word only. Be a tour of the word. And my father will love him and we will come to him and make our dwelling place with him. Obey God and be blessed. Deuteronomy talks about when we obey, obey God, every word of God, that he's going to bless us in the city. He's going to bless us in the field. He's going to bless us going out. He's going to bless us coming in. He's going to make us the head and not the tail above and not believe. He's going to bless the fruit of our wounds. Listen, when you obey God, everything about you is going to be blessed. Your children, your home, your marriage, your job. Listen to me, your business, your ministry. Obedience is the key to blessings and prosperity in God. Many of us are missing out on our blessing. We're missing God because we're not obedient. We're not obedient. Obedience brings blessings. Disobedience brings curses. Which do you want? Blessings or curses? If ain't nothing going right in your life right now, you can't see any blessing every corner, you better check your level of obedience. Are you obeying God? Are you obeying God? That's the key to open up every door of blessings in your life is obedience. So obey God. This is the final step. Seek wise counsel. I love how his servants came near and spoke to him and said, my father, if the prophet had told you to do something great, See, all the guys that go preach at a congregation of, of 10,000 people, some of us are ready to go. Oh, we, that's, that's beautiful. Now we can go and stand before all these people. They can see our, our, hear our, our anointing. They can see us in the pulpit. They are 10,000. What about when there's 10 people? Let me tell you, there are times I've preached at a church when it was just a husband and a wife and the three children. But I prepared my message as if I was preaching before millions. Today, right now, I have 15 people watching. But yet, I went before the Lord. I humbled myself. I prayed. I studied. And I began to seek the Lord about what he would have me to say to the people. I didn't care if there was one of you here today. I was going to preach with the same level of anointing. I was going to preach with the same degree of authority. I was going to preach with the same amount of passion because God sent be here. It's not about my will. It's about his will. And that's what I'm after. That's what I'm seeking to do. The will of the father. Woo. Thank you, Lord. If he had told you to do something great, would you not have done it? How much more than when he says to you, wash and be clean. So he went down and dipped seven times in the Jordan, according to the, to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh was restored like the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. Look at wise counsel. The Bible says, though, if you want to be wise, you must walk with the wise. You can't walk with fools and be wise. Walk with the wise. That's wise counsel. The people who were with him, his servant said, Father, <laughs> what difference does it make? You're going to be healed. You're a leper. You have a deadly skin disease that's highly contagious. You look weird. Nobody wants to be around you. You're glad that we're here. And you have an opportunity to be healed. But because of your pride, you're going to say, why do you have to dip and go wash in the Jordan River and not some of the other ones? How desperately do you want your healing, people of God? How badly do you want your deliverance? How much do you want the purposes and plan of God to prosperity, to prevail in your life? Do you really want it? Because if you do, you will obey God. You will do what he tells you to do, when he tells you to do it, and how he tells you to do it. You won't care who's looking. You won't care who's talking. You won't care who's watching. 
You won't care who's opposing. This is what the Lord told me to do. My healing is contingent upon me doing this thing. My deliverance is contingent upon my doing this thing. Name is healing was contingent upon him going and washing in the Jordan. Seven times he was making a big deal out of it. Aren't you tired of being a leper? Aren't you tired of being the same person? God wants to change your attitude, but you don't want to humble yourself before God. You don't want to obey God. You don't want to trust God's way of bringing about deliverance in your life. And then you wonder why you're still the same person. You still got the same mindset, the same attitude. How badly do you want to change? Obey God and watch how blessings begin to overflow in your life. Seek wise counsel. Thank you, Father. It says in Proverbs 15 and 22, without consultation and wise advice, plans are frustrated. But with many counselors, they are established and succeed. Proverbs 15 and 22. Because Naaman obeyed God. Thank you, Father. He was healed. He was made whole. He was made clean. And now he was able to stand in the presence of the prophet Elisha. He was able to stand in the presence of of the almighty God. And he came to believe in God. He came to believe. Which is the greatest victory. That any of us will ever have. It's the victory that we have in God. Thanks be to God. Who always give us the victory through Christ Jesus. He had the greatest victory. That he will ever have granted. To him by God. When he came to faith in God. He was a foreigner. Who traveled to a, a, a place. For healing. He thought it was going to be a physical healing, but it ended up being more than physical. It was spiritual. He came to faith in God, and that's the greatest victory that any of us can ever have in our lives. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Father, we just thank you today, Lord Jesus. Thank you, God. Lord, we don't want to miss you in any way, on any day. Father God, we don't want to miss the mark ever again, God. Forgive us for those times. That we have missed you because we were disobedient. We have missed you because we were prideful. We have missed you because we have not been studying your word, spending quality time in your word, meditating upon your word. Spend the time in your presence, oh God, forgive us. Forgive us when we have not fully trusted, oh God, your purpose and plan for our lives. We have not fully confided and relied upon you and trusted in you, God, for everything that we need. Father, today we come with the spirit of repentance. And we come with the spirit of thanksgiving, asking for forgiveness. And thank you in the same, oh God, for forgiving us. And thank you, oh God, for showing us a new way. Oh my God, a new strategy, giving us biblical truth and precepts, oh God, that have sharpened, oh God, our spirits today, Lord God, that has given us greater wisdom and knowledge and understanding, oh God. Father, we thank you today that from this day forward, oh God, that we will, we will acknowledge you in all of our ways, the big ways, the small ways, ways we think are insignificant, God. It all matters to you, God. And so, Father, from this day forward, we will acknowledge you in all of our ways so that you, God, will direct our paths. Father God, continue to reveal your will to us each and every time we pray, each and every time. We study your word each and every time that we spend quality time in your presence. Oh, God, open up our understanding. Open up our eyes. Help us to not be foolish nor thoughtless, oh, God, but to grasp, to firmly grasp and fully understand what the will of God is concerning our lives, Father God. We thank you that your will is not a mystery, but that you want us to know it. And, Father, help us to go about, oh, God, coming into the knowledge of your will, oh, God, in every way possible. May your purpose and plan, oh, God, continue to prevail in our lives. We thank you, Father, today for your goodness. We, we thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for being mindful of us, O oh God. Thank you for speaking your oracles today, Lord God. Thank you for enlightening our understanding. Thank you for revelation, O oh God, and confirmation on today, God. Bless your people today in a special way, God. Continue, O oh God, to increase them in the knowledge and grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, O oh God. Father, continue to help them to be steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the works in the, of the Lord, so that their labor in you will not be in vain, O oh God. Help them to hold fast to their confession of faith, for he who promises faithful, O oh God. Father, you're going to do for them what you said you're going to do, Father. You are a God who keeps his promise. Father, not a promise of yours will ever lack, O oh God. You did it in the days of old, and you're doing it right now, O oh God. You're staying truthful and faithful, O oh God, to yourself, to your word, to your promises and your provision, O oh God. Father, continue to bless everybody who's watching right now and those who are to come, Father. Keep them, O oh God, safe and tucked under your, your, your wings of safety 
and protection, oh God. Keep their families covered, oh God. Shield them with your favor, oh God. Father, I pray that you will bless every family, every person who's represented here today, oh God. That you will continue to order their steps with your word and your Holy Spirit, Father. Not only are you our God, but Father, you are our God, Father. Lead us in the way that you will have us to go each and every day, oh God. And Father, let not our will, but your perfect will be done in our lives each and every day and in every situation under all circumstances, oh God. Let your will be done, Father. Help us to humble ourselves, to surrender and yield and totally commit ourselves to your will, your ways, and your word. Father, we thank you right now. We praise your holy name. And we give you the honor, the glory, and the praise that you desire and you deserve. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Praise God, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me again. What a great word from the Lord. It blessed my soul. God bless each and every one of you. God bless you, Prophet Rick. God bless you, and Sonia. Hallelujah. God bless you, Cheryl. God bless each and every one of you, Monica, L. Uh, my husband, St. Clair, Portia, I saw Taurus Moore, my classmate. God bless you guys. Hold on to this word. I'm going to post it on my Facebook. I'm going to take it over to my YouTube channel. Please watch it as many times as you like and let God continue to speak to your heart concerning not missing him. God bless you, Cody. Love to, much love to you and my family. Thank you guys for your love and support. Continue to pray for me. Let's continue to pray for one another. We need each other. We need each other. Let us continue to pray and uplift one another in the Lord. God bless you, Miss Carolyn McClendon. And again, thank you all for joining me today. Be blessed of the Lord. I love you all. God bless you.